Welcome everyone to this video series on the correct use of the eView TPS sensor and the eView Sends app. In this video, we'll be looking into the use of the eView Sends app as if we're a user who's trying it out for the first time. As you can already see on the desktop of my tablet, I've downloaded the eView Sends app, and it's listed right here, shown as a blue flower-like icon. I'm going to click on that app icon, and it's going to open up the main menu of the eView Sends app. Here we can see you have two options, login and practice. Practice we'll learn more about when I get to the actual training and practice stage in the next video. But today we're going to focus on logging in. The EvoSense app is structured so that individual users have their own unique profiles with usernames and passwords to access and save data under them. If you do not know the password of someone else using the exact same tablet or smartphone, then you're unable to access their information, which means that all information is protected. If we were to go to the eViewSense menu at the upper left and click on here, you're going to see that there's a help menu. And this help menu gives instructions on how to use every aspect of the eViewSense app as well as how to use the TPS sensor. So if everyone want to refer to any directions while not following this video, feel free to go to that help menu. I'm going to hit the back button on the tablet itself to return to the main menu. And now I'm going to click on the login button. Now, if I already used this app before, I would have a username and a password that I can enter. Since I'm going to pretend that this is the first time I'm using it, I'm instead going to hit the sign up button. Now, in this create account window, the system is asking me for a name, username, email, and password. You required each of these fields to have four characters in them, so I'm going to enter that right now. So under name, I'm going to type in John Bale. And I'm going to make the username the same thing because that keeps it easy. Under email, I'm going to write my email for Thought Technology. And then the password, since evidently everyone is watching, I'm going to simply call it password1. If by chance you ever forget your password one day, you can always use the retrieve password function to have an email sent to your email account with a new temporary password. As you can see at the bottom, there's two additional fields that say clinician name and clinician email. The system does allow for progress reports uh, of training sessions to be sent to the listed clinician uh, upon the completion of each training session. If there's a clinician's name and email included in here, those reports will be sent. If there is no name or email entered, it can still be entered at a later time by just modifying those session settings. I'm going to keep the check mark in the keep me logged in box, indicating that when I close the app, I want it to remember that I'm still logged in when I reopen it later. And I'm going to hit the create account button. Now, automatically upon uh, the creation of a new account, the system will send me to that help menu that I briefly showed you before. And this word gives me a reminder of how to use the TPS sensor, how to put it on, how to start up a training session, what I should do for the goal of a training session, how to review the data, and so on. If you'd like, you can examine these different aspects of the program by simply clicking on one and then scrolling through the information and then hitting back to return to the help menu. But I myself am going to hit the back button on the tablet once more to actually return to the main menu of the eView Sense app. Now, you can see that there's three buttons currently listed right now. They are Train, Practice, and Review. Review will let me look over previously saved information uh, from training sessions. I have no training session information saved, so there's nothing that can be effectively done with that button yet. For the Train and Practice, they essentially bring up very similar types of sessions with only minor differences um, in that the training session saves the data at the end of the session, as well as there's a few additional aspects to feedback which we'll learn about later. For now, I'm going to hit the Train button, and the system is automatically going to prompt me to begin a new program. By program, we mean a series of 10 training sessions where I'm training for fixed duration of time, and ultimately across those 10 sessions, I want to achieve a program goal of a fixed number of points. In this new window, we can see under connected devices it's listing the available TPS sensors. And according to the first video and the sensor that I actually use, I will set the connected devices to TP001110. If at a later time I'm using a different TPS sensor, I can just tell the system to switch and look for a different TPS sensor when pairing together for a training or practice session. Under session time, this is the fixed duration that each training session will last. Uh, the shortest period is 5 minutes, and the longest period can go up to 60 minutes. However, for this session, I'm going to stick to 5 minutes. In the program goal, we have 
different uh, point goals that we might be training towards based on our skill level and how well we are able to achieve good self-regulation when it comes to uh, focused, calm, recovery, relaxation. For me, I'm going to select a beginner goal of 300 points, but if I was a more advanced user, I can select anything between intermediate, advanced, and expert. So when I'm ready to go. I'm going to hit the Go button of the new program, and the system is going to look for my TPS sensor. There we go. And once it is, once it is connected, it will automatically begin a training session, which is initiated with a feedback countdown. Join me in the next video where we learn about all aspects of running a training session.